thank the organizers for arranging the interview with Michael because it's a, it's a good opportunity to revisit uh, his writing. Um, uh, but also, the, since, since this is a creative uh, writing workshop, um, the, not just the writings per se, but the process mm -hmm. that leads to the writing. Yes, yes. And the whole context. So we will be talking about this as well. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, well, I mean, uh, mm -hmm. let's okay. say it's let's an excuse for the conversation. Yes. Um, but there are actually two, two themes I wish us to maybe focus a bit more on. Because I, uh, we can use these then as a stepping stone, as a springboard to the workshops and to the to the writing and uh, to this weekend basically. Um, one thing is uh, is the whole discussion around emotions. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so I would like us to go maybe a bit into into that, and then um, uh, the other theme would be. Um, uh, Elements, mm -hmm. uh, because I'm I'm choosing these two themes because I think they are on a continuum mm -hmm. of uh, of the of the things that we can choose to write. Mm -hmm. I think taking emotions mm -hmm. and taking elements, mm -hmm. whatever you understand by those, mm -hmm. um, those are the raw material for mm -hmm. not just writing but any art form, mm -hmm. and actually any any creative. Mm -hmm. um, any creative undertaking by any human being, mm -hmm. even in science, yeah. because scientists have to under, understand, have some kind of at least a theoretical model in their mind about what constitutes the elements, mm -hmm. that is the building blocks of existence. Yes, the elements are yes. are all that which changes, and the emotions mean to connect with something that doesn't change, something central, ex moto, something out of which movement comes. Can, can you maybe elaborate? Let's, let's start with emotions. Uh, yes. Uh, what is your understanding on that and how... Well, in, in, in Maltese we associate this with the word for sound, hos. And, and sound, I was, t I, was telling, I was telling them just before you came, sound carries feeling, it carries a power with it. That, that very often gets obscured by the meaning of what that sound is saying. So in language, and this is this is the this brings me straight to this. In language, I may read a verse, and you may focus on what I am saying rather than in, on how I am saying it or on the sound which I am saying. If you focus on what I am saying, then your mind goes in one way. Yes. And very often, in that sense, the emotion that's, that out of which what I'm saying arises, that emotion can very easily be obscured because you're focused on what I am saying. You're, you're listening to what I'm saying, not to the fact that I'm saying it. Now, that is a pro I always found that problematic with with poetry, for example, um, because um, people get fascinated by these images, and the, the surrealists get really involved in in all the strangest images that they can create in order that your mind can go somewhere with them. So I started to listen to what I was saying. And the first thing I discovered was that when I listened to what I was saying, what I was saying was included. The meaning was included. So I started to discover that listening to the sound of a verse includes its meaning. But trying to understand its meaning usually excludes the emotional aspect, the listening. It excludes it. So you get very excited about the imagery and the colors and the, and the thoughts and the ideas and the drift of what's happening. You get very excited about that, but you lose the contact with the eternal silence out of which the writer or the reader is speaking. You said emotion comes from 
the un the un the unmoving. unmoving. Yeah. Emotions. How how and now you really start to get out of silence. Yes. Yes. So how was I think we from our common understanding of the word emotion, we might actually have a completely opposite association. Yes, yes. we associate it with feelings, mm -hmm. with things that are like excitement or fear or anger or whatever. Mm -hmm. These are feelings, these are very dynamic, very active. Um, but emotion literally is the term ex moto, that out of which movement comes. And that out of which movement comes is stillness. That's where it comes. Is itself from. not moving. Is itself not moving. Um, and therefore, the true emotions, and this is what the philosophers and the poets try to, um, the great ones at least, I'm thinking of Rainer Maria Rilke, I'm thinking of William Shakespeare here. Th this is what they try to dig their paws into this appreciation of the unmoving that is the cause of all that is moving. At least this is how I read them. And of course, there is a key here. As soon as you start to listen, so if you listen to my voice, you start to understand what I'm saying as well. If you try to understand what I'm saying, your minds will start to flitter around in your conversation with me or your exclusion of what I'm saying or your own dreams even. You, you drift away. Mm -hmm. So there will be all this movement. So, so I started writing with a very clear um, eye set on the fact that I was producing a um, sequence of sounds besides, besides um, the ideas and the thought and the imagery and but the basic idea was that there was a sequence of sound. This notion came to me from very many different directions but one place it came to me from was um, in, in my study of this very ancient phonetic language, which is the Sanskrit language. So I start Analena by, by quoting a verse from possibly what is the most ancient literature in the world, um, which is something called the Rig Veda. I will not go into telling you what Veda is and what the Rig Veda is, but I will quote this verse and then, and then, and then translate it into Maltese. Something else that I did here in this, in this, with this text is that besides the actual um, text, uh, and while I was writing these and, and trying them on my friends, I had several guinea pigs, he was one of them, and Glenn was one. There was this um, then young lady, now she's a mother of two, um, called Helga, Helga Portanier. She, she, was, she was reading theater study studies study and philosophy yes. and she was writing her, her philosophy, um, her thesis with me and, and she was painting and she was taking painting in a very, very serious way, very, very intense. And when, when reading these out with her, um, we started speaking about not merely what they were saying, but this content of sound in them. And she was starting to sort of um, reflect on how that sound can actually be transformed into these pictures that she produced. And so she produced a series of pictures and they are literally that size. The pictures are actually that size. There, there is a series of very beautiful um, miniatures, uh, which then um, we, we, we published. We published the work in, in, on, on paper that is, if you notice, that is very quickly um, deteriorating, and that was on purpose. I wanted, I wanted the paper to become as yellow as quickly as possible, with as many spots as <laughs> can be. And so we chose a particular type of paper to publish it in. Um, you can work out for yourselves, because I have no idea why I did that. 
Well, you, you went with the flow, because anyway, <laughs> the paper goes that way. So, <laughs> so anyway... Rather than resisting it, you... Maybe we can hear the verse... And, and uh, maybe we can hear... No, no, no. I will read this out to you. It will last for about 20 minutes. I will read through the whole of it. It will last for about 20 minutes. And um, especially those of you who are Maltese, please do focus on the sound of the voice. You will not miss what is being said, but do focus on the sound of the voice. 